Hi, welcome to our adult small group Bible study. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We're going to continue our study through the book of Revelation. I hope and pray that you'll uh, open your Bibles with us this uh, day as we open God's Word together. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll get started. Father, we say thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity we have to open your Word. Father, help us to discern it, to know it, and to follow it. God, we love you. And we thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for us. It's in your name we will pray. Amen. Uh, so uh, let's recap where we've been. We've seen the seven churches of Asia. All of a sudden, we are then, John tells us that he uh, was taken to heaven, and he sees some things in heaven. Uh, we've looked at the throne room in heaven, and as we've looked at the throne room of heaven, we, we realize that it's a splendid sight to see, but also we realize this, is that John was literally moved to tears as he uh, was there and seen the scroll, but there was nobody worthy to take on uh, the, the, the scroll. Nobody was worthy to loose the seals of the scroll. And then the Lamb of God steps forward. And that's where we, uh, where we left off last week is uh, the Lamb of God stepping forward. And, and we're going to continue in Revelation 5. We're going to look at verses 8 through 14. So go ahead and open your Bible. Uh, we'll go verse by verse uh, as we always do. It says, Now when he uh, had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp, a golden bowl full of incense, uh, which is the prayers of the saints. So what we see here is now the lamb has stepped forward. It says that he's now taken the scroll. And as he's taken the scroll, he now, uh, it says that when he picked up that scroll, the four living creatures, which we, we, just, uh, we said were like angels, uh, we, they're, they're a mixture. We, we don't know exactly what kind of beast they are. We do know this is that they are living creatures. Uh, and so we're going to go with that and we'll, we'll continue to look at that. But there's four living creatures here. And these living creatures, um, uh, they have 24 and the 24 elders, it says that they fell down before the lamb. They fell down before the lamb. I, I don't know about you, but whenever their eyes were cast upon the lamb of God and as the lamb of God took the scrolls, they couldn't do nothing but uh, fall on their face before him. Uh, it says that each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense. Now, this is uh, uh, something that's pretty interesting, is that they had uh, the, the harps, which, we, which we'll, we'll get into more about later on, about the song that is going to be sung in heaven. But it says also that they each had uh, golden bowls full of incense. Now, this is where we, we, we look at that there are some commentaries that speculate on some different things when it comes to these golden bowls that are full of incense. We're, we're told this, that these golden bowls full of incense, notice that it says, which are the prayers of the saints. Now, the speculation is this, is that these prayers of the saints are uh, the ones that were the martyred saints crying to God to avenge their blood. That's, that's what some, think, some line of thinking is. But, but I, I want you to realize this. We don't exactly know that for sure, but what we have to realize is this, is regardless of what they are, we know that they are the prayers of God's people, those that are His children. Uh, now, what we do realize is this, even though these gold bowls are full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, we also realize this, uh, is that we do not see any scriptural evidence that says uh, that they are suggested, uh, that they presented them to God, or that they had any part in answering the prayer. So it's very important that you realize that. Verse 9 says this, And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us by God, uh, us to God by your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. The four living creatures, the 24 elders, it says that they sang a new song. Now, I want you to realize something. That's kind of one of those dirty words in a Baptist church is, is they sang a new song. Because some of you just like the old song so much, you don't think there's a, ever going to be a good new song. But I want you to notice the song that they sing. They sing a psalm, a, a song to the one uh, who was worthy to take the scroll, the one who was worthy to execute judgment because of his redemptive plan uh, that he, he had done on the cross of Calvary. Uh, we notice this, is that this new uh, song says, you were slain. 
You were slain. And yes, as you were slain, we do also know this. And because of that, and have redeemed us to God. You have bought us. You have paid the price for us. You have taken our debt and you have canceled that debt out. And by your blood, by your blood, we are now redeemed with God. Now, notice that it says this, by your blood, out of every tribe, out of every tongue, out of every people, out of every nation. These four things are big. These four things are huge. Because we got to realize this. Jesus didn't die for just one group of people or for one people group. It's out of every tribe. It doesn't matter if they speak English, Aramaic, German, French, Spanish, uh, or, or, or some other language. But what matters is this. He died to redeem those out of every tongue. And not only that, we see this, is that God sent His Son Jesus to die for every people because this is something we have to realize. The gospel isn't just for one group of people, but it's for all of mankind. It wasn't for one nation, but for every nation. See, Jesus is worthy to execute His judgment. Why? Simply because He is the one that was found worthy to go to the cross and to die for all of humanity. Verse 10 says this, And have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Notice that there are two positions that we see that have been manifested here. Kings and priests. You know, a lot of times people want to look at life and they want to be classified in some special group or some elite group. But I want you to realize something. God has placed us in a position of authority. And as we've been placed in a position of authority, realize this, as a king or as a priest, we are still representatives to our God. To our God. We are His representatives. We are His mouthpiece. We are to do His work. But notice that he says something very clear here. We shall reign on the earth. And to reign with him is simply this. It's a millennia on earth. So the millennial reign of Christ. Now, verse 11, we'll get into a, a little bit more of that here in just a little bit. But, but let's look at verse 11. Verse 11 says this. Then I took, uh, then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousand of thousands. Notice something that's pretty interesting here. John looked and he heard. You know, two of the senses that we, we look at mostly are, are what we see and what we hear. What we see and what we hear. Now, I, I want you to realize that he says this. I heard the voice of many angels. I heard the voice of many angels. And notice this. They were around the throne. And not only were they around the throne, they were around the living creatures. And not only were they around the throne and the living creatures, it says that they are, were around the 24 elders. And it says this. The number of them was this. 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Basically, in simple math, it means this. It's innumerable. The angels were innumerable. These were the creation of God that were set there to glorify God and to give Him praise. In verse 12, it gives us the song that they sing, the voice that they share. It says this, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. That's kind of a mouthful. When we think about all that God is worthy of, worthy is this Lamb who has not only come to judge, but He is worthy of everything. He was slain. He was slain for all of, sin, uh, of mankind, for the sin debt that we all owe, and yet He is worthy. Now, of what He's worthy, there are six things that they, uh, they, uh, 
they, uh, sorry, there's seven things that they share with us, seven being the number of completion. And notice that they say power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Now, this is what I want you to see. This is what I want you to realize. He is worthy of our power. The Lamb is worthy to receive our power. God's power over my life. God's power over His church. God's power over the world. God's power over the universe. Not only is God worthy of the position of power, but He's also worthy of our riches, of all the silver and of all the gold. And yet His wisdom, He is worthy of all wisdom. The finest of all intellect powers belong to, to God. He is the worthy Lamb. Not only that is, is He's worthy of all strength. My physical strength is for His service. All that I have is for His glory and His honor, which leads us to the simple thing uh, of the fifth thing, honor. Uh, it's a single pure desire to magnify Him in all my ways. I want to honor my God. I want to honor my Savior. I want to honor my King. But not only is He worthy of power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, He's also worthy of glory. My entire life should be devoted to glorifying Him. Why? Because He's worthy of blessings. All my power of praise is for Him. Guys, I want you to realize that one day we're going to join the angels in singing this song with these seven verses. Oh God, You are worthy. Worthy to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. God, you are worthy of everything that I have and everything that I ever will be. Verse 13 states this. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, uh, such, are at, uh, such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. Let's notice a few things about this verse. First of all, it says every creature, everything that God created. Notice what he says in heaven, on earth, under the earth and all that are in the sea. All. All, oh, that's, a, that's a powerful word. The word all is such a great word. The great word that we see here that we have to realize is this, is that they raise their voices. All will raise their voices saying, blessing, honor, glory, and power be to him who sits on my throne. Be to the lamb forever and ever. Now, I want you to realize something. There's a great parallel that occurs right here. This verse simply parallels Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, and which uh, insists that every knee will bow at the name of Jesus and every tongue will confess Him. See, there is no single specific time mentioned here. But what we do realize this is this. It is obvious that, that this will be after the saved are raised to everlasting life. And then after the unsaved are raised into everlasting judgment. See, believers will have already acknowledged Jesus as Lord and unbelievers will be compelled uh, to honor him and worship the father, the son uh, is an assured fact that every single person, whether they're in heaven, on the earth or under the earth or in the sea, they are in fact... Going to worship Him forever. Verse 14. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped Him who lives forever and ever. What a great God we serve. What an awesome opportunity we have to give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords our life right here and right now. And one day we will sing 
with the angels in glory to our King who reigns forever and ever. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity we have had to come before you. God, I pray that you would continue to strengthen us and guide us and encourage us. God, that we might be your servants. Father, may we realize who you are and what we're to do for you even now. Father, I pray that the lost will be saved and that your children would start living as redeemed individuals and quit living in the pig pen of this life. Oh God, help us to pick up and follow you. It's in your name. Amen. God bless you and have a great week.